I thought I would show you all how to dry brush ceramics, um, ceramic disc in particular, for molds. Um, the other day, well, a couple weeks ago, more like, I dry brushed this St. Bernard. Now, it's not perfect at all by any stretch of the imagination, but I hadn't dry brushed in literally 35 to 40 years because I last time I actually did dry brushing was I want to say back in the early 80s somewhere in that ballpark a friend of mine I was in her wedding and I was working at Taco Bell in fact it was my first job I ever had so I'm trying to think how old I was I was that was my early 20s that's how long ago okay so anyway I decided to paint this little St. Bernard um and she turned out pretty good for being so long since I've done it. I'm really proud of how her face turned out. I don't know if you can see that. Let me turn over a, uh... yeah. And you know, so there's several different colors of coats of paint on here. But anyway, I just wanted to show you real quickly the St. Bernard, only to show you what dry brushing looks like. This is done with acrylic paint on ceramic bisque. And but my project, it's a turkey. Here's my turkey I'm going to be doing. Let me move this water bucket over. So, this is the turkey. It's probably hard for you to see. Now, I'm going to be doing this in more than one recording. So, like the next recording you see, I'm going to have a different setup. I think I'm going to do it on my kitchen table. But the first step is to clean it. Is to you know get all the dust off of it. So I've been working on getting the dust off of it. So I took a damp sponge and wiped it down in the kitchen, and then I uh, took a, a paintbrush and just went through and getting all those little nooks and crannies, places like that, and in the back and such. And then I took a baby wipe because there's a bunch of dust inside. I took a baby wipe and wiped a lot of that out. Not too super worried about what's inside. I want to make sure I got the outside. So it's pretty de-dusted. I guess that's the word for de-dusted. But right now we're on the top back of it. And here's the side view profile of him. He's really, really cute. He's pretty big. It's, it's hard to do it on this table like this with this view for you all to see. So, But when I start doing the detail, I'm going to do it on the table. Like I said, I'm just doing the basic um, undercoat part of it. And I need to show you my um what do you call it the um my reference that's what it is so here's my reference picture i'm going to use this to um to figure out colors to paint on him and you can see all in the background there's a lot of black so i want the black to be in the shadowing like in the feather details and that so i'm gonna do a coat of black paint on here but i don't think i'm gonna put it on like full strength i think i'm gonna wash it out more so it's truly more like a stain i mean i might do parts of it darker than others like like his feathers tail feathers um and then according to this reference and i pulled the reference sheet in at the same time so you know what i'm talking about so i'm going to do his tail feathers here darker or i think with darker paint and then these feathers down here darker paint and then through here kind of darker and then lighter like light, lighter going to darker like an ombre in the background and this head I'm kind of going to do like a really light wash I think because so the red will pop out more in the blue because there's not as much texture on the head anyway so anyway um that's my reference and that's what I'm going to go off of I'm going to do the whole thing in a black wash here there's his feet and the ground so that that picture is pretty close and i'm just going to use some artesana acrylic black paint and just it's because it's what i have i don't have any of the fancy um ceramic paints or stains or anything yet but this will work for my purposes that's what i used on my saint bernard was was a mixture of this artesana and that kind of off-brand stuff i got at um I got through Amazon. It's called Sutton or something like that. Shuttle, not Sutton. Shuttle Art. It was a really good deal. It was like 30, 
$30-35 for 50 bottles. Makes it less than a dollar a bottle. And it did, it turned out really well. So I'm impressed with that paint for doing this type of work. I don't know about paint on canvas or anything. Depends how fussy you might be. But it, it, it's a good craft paint anyway. I, I was happy with it. The pigments seemed nice and strong. And hey, I, could, I thought it couldn't hurt to try anyway. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and uh, give me some of this paint out of my, this palette. And I'm going to need quite a bit of it, but I'm just going to do a little bit as I go. And then I'm going to need to water this down. And that's quite a bit of water, but that's how I want it. Now, right now we're not dry brushing, so to say. We're actually painting. We're going to be painting this on there. And I need a, I shouldn't be using this brush to do this. I should uh, use my palette knife. I guess it doesn't matter. And I'll show you the viscosity here in a minute of this one. That, that paint comes out pretty thick because I think the viscosity right now is still pretty thick. So it's not even dripping from the brush. I have to make it come off the brush. I don't know if you can tell the viscosity or not. I have to work with it. So it probably could be even a little looser. That's probably more like what I'd put on the, t on the tail. Right now, I want it really thin. I'm going to try this on the tail just to see how. Yeah, that's pretty dark. But let me go ahead and coat the tail. And I'll probably speed this video up here and there because, you know, it's, I'm, just, I'm just painting everything one color here. I think I got it off. I haven't. I can always touch it up later. But I just basically wanted to show the first coat of dry brushing. We got a nice coat of black, lighter coats where the paint's going to be lighter. And the tail I did nice and dark um, because most of the tail really is dark. And then, um, anyway, so um, this is my my reference. And then I will also, when this is almost finished, I'll be I can paint some white on the tail, just like I don't know if you can see where I'm at. White around the tail, just like you. Uh, in this picture anyway all right so i'll be back with the next coats or so so this video is going to be a tiny the steps are going to be a tiny bit out of order um but it will make sense here in a little bit but i have this turkey here i'm going to dry brush him and this is my um oh my reference so i'm going to paint him in colors like this next i want to go over the different supplies that i'm using and tools for dry brushing. And then after I go through that, then this video will cut to me actually doing the base coat on this turkey. Yes, let's talk about the palette. Now, if, if you go back to the reference, we got browns and blues, a little bit of green, red, and you know, kind of natural looking colors, of course. So I've got several bottles of paint here. Let's start with the browns because that's what I, <laughs> got sitting right here. Yeah. And you, I'm just trying to do this here. Okay. Here's a, some shades here. So I'm going to take several shades. And the reason I'm showing you all these is because it's going to start with a darker color first and go to the medium and the light. But yes, I got white paint here because some of it I'll have to tone down, make it more white or whatever. And you notice I got different brands here. I have Artisna and I also have um, Shuttle Art. I like them both. The Shuttle Art, the package I bought of Shuttle Art or the, the set. Well, anyway, it comes with a lot more colors. So that's why I got that. Okay, and there's my browns and I got a gray. 
And then here's red for the head. Really warm red. That's going to be like on the very top. Then it'll make sense to you later. And then a darker and a medium. Oops. A darker and a medium. And we'll start with a darker. And then we have a variety of blues. I have more blues that I might be pulling out. And then greens. You know, there's a little green in his chest, but the greens are basically going to be for the ground. See, there's ground here in, in this um, reference, but he is sitting on some ground. There's on his, his feet. I don't know if you can make that out or not. His foot. Okay. So anyway, I am going to get started with that. Oh, sorry. I'll get started with that in just a minute. Okay. Here's a little bit of equipment. Now you don't have to have all this equipment or tools, however you want to look at it. I keep saying equipment. You don't have to have all these tools necessarily. Just use what you have. You can use a paper plate. I've seen some people use a piece of tin foil. It, whatever, whatever you find, whatever you have, don't go run out and buy a bunch of stuff. I'm using this palette because I have to have the palette. I got this at one of those outlet stores I talk about all the time around my house. I think I paid a dollar fifty for it, and I thought, oh, that'll be handy. It's nice and big. It's going to be nice and handy for this big project. But some of you might have little ones like this. And when I painted my Saint Bernard, I, this is the one that I used. So again, you don't have anything fancy, just use what you got. I'm just showing you these things just to kind of help you out. And then I have to be at that outlet store. Oops. And this is actually for makeup, as you can see. And it's a metal palette. It's real nice. And it's got this spatula thing. I haven't used it yet. But I thought, oh, that would be nice to mix paint with. Mix it, you know, like this or so. Um, but based on showing you this, just keep your eye out for stuff. They have special brushes for dry brushing. I don't have any of those brushes. So what am I doing, right? I'm using what I have. So I heard once somebody, I was watching them do dry brushing, and they didn't have any dry brush brushes either. So what did they say? They bought makeup brushes. So I went to the outlet store by my house again and picked up these Cute little makeup brushes. In fact, they're kind of too cute to use for paint brushes. This looks like confetti in there. It's like real plastic little beads. Anyway, but they're super soft and they're rounded. And these are, I believe they're similar to dry brush brushes. But this is what I'm going to be using because this is what I have. And and I don't want to run out and buy real fancy expensive dry brushes at the moment. Plus, I have to wait to have them come in, you know, send for them and I just run to the store and grab those. Anyway, and these are really soft. So I'm going to try to use these too. These are just cheap little brushes that I've had for years. I couldn't even tell you where I got them. And this is a stipple brush. I used to mm, I used to do tool painting. See, this is stiffer. I don't know if you can tell or not. And here's another stipple brush. I used to do tool painting back in late 90s and 2000s. That's where I got um, this palette knife because I was really into that for a while. And then this is another stipple, another stipple brush. And you probably wonder what stippling, if you're not familiar with painting, you're probably wondering what stippling is. If you watch this video and farther into it, you'll see what it is. Anyway, so basically just use what you have. Like I've always been saying, and those are the brush. These are the brushes that I'm going to be using today. And I'm going to start mixing my palette up. So I was saying a little earlier, I'm going to start with my darkest colors first. So the darkest colors to start out with is going to be the browns, I believe. Well, that's what I'm going to start with. So I'm going to start with his tail. Move this over here. So let me move my turkey bird back over here. So I'm going to start painting this brown first, and I. I promise I'm going to really try really hard to keep them in frame. When I sit down, though, I'm not going to be able to see the screen where I'm at. Um, at the moment, that's why you see me <laughs> moving around funny. is because I'm looking at this the iPad screen. Okay, so I'm going to start out with a dark brown. So I had a couple dark browns here. 
and I'm not exactly sure which one to start with. And I don't want to be super duper dark because that's that black's already there. But I think I'll start out with it anyway, just to um, give it some depth. One thing I've noticed: this paint's thick, which is a good thing. See how thick it is. I'm going to water it down. Um, I just find for myself it works better if it's thinner than rather than thicker for the dry brushing. I mean, it sounds kind of counterintuitive that you want it wet, but I don't want it as strong. So I'm gonna, you can't see what I'm doing exactly. Let's see if I can bring it into frame. Oops, and hold it up. So I'm just watering it down. I'm gonna need more of this. I already know because I had a big area to paint. But we'll start out with that. And being I'm doing a large area, I'm just going to go ahead and use one of these larger brushes. I'm just going to start with that brush. So I'm just wiping this off with a brush, basically. It's called dry brushing because you start out with a, a dry brush. You don't wet the brush down like you would maybe from some other kind of painting projects that you might do. So. I'm just getting the tip of it wet and then I'm going to just kind of rub that in over here. Rub, rub, rub. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to quote the bristles. That's my main thing. And now I need to rub a lot of that off. And you can use different things. I'm just going to use paper towel today. You can use a paper bag or whatever you might have. So see, I'm going in there. I'm just rubbing a lot of that out of there. Come over here, it's still kind of heavy. So basically you're leaving paint residue behind is what you're trying to do. So I think that's light enough for right now. So let's go ahead and start paint, um, painting him. So dry brushing is all I'm doing is just going around like this. And basically it's catching just the, the highlights of this bisque. All because it's textured, so it's getting all the top thing like the, um, I don't know what you call it on the part of the feather with a the little bone part. But that's what I'm starting out to do first. So I'm going to go around like this. And like I said, this is like a really dark color. So I'm going back into um, some of the wet paint over there here. Um, you can't see it at the moment, I don't believe. I'm going to go around this. Looks like I got a little bit bunch of brown right there. I don't necessarily want it that dark because my brush is too wet. But I'm not super duper worried about it because when I go in those other colors um, for dry brushing that will knock some of that back. So, so I'm going to go ahead and coat, it, coat this. You can grab yourself a cup of tea, a Diet Coke, like I drink, whatever. And I may speed this up. Because it's, a, you know, <laughs> I'm just, just painting. All right. And then looking at the reference, it looks like these feathers have a lot of brown in them. So I'm just going to go ahead and, and get those as well. Again, I'm not super picky about maybe accidentally putting too much of this brown down. Um, I mainly want the black in the shadow area anyway. But I'm going to be putting so many different coats of light brown paint on here that that's not even going to, it's not going to matter that I got that much down. Oh, okay. I was like, that was really different. Okay, there's this. It just looked really different to me. There's um, the feathers in the painting. Like I just did on the other side, exactly. These feathers on my reference look pretty dark too, so I'm just gonna go ahead and put these down here too.
if you notice I'm going against the grain, I guess you're going to call it grain, feathers are growing this way, instead of painting down like this, because I don't really want the, very much brown into the crevices, I want the highlight, so I'm going the opposite direction. And if I get a little brown over here, it doesn't matter. I mean, this is it, this is representing a real live living bird. And see, I'm just kind of just barely rubbing this off because I don't mind if there's a tiny bit of brown showing. Well, this brown is so dark, to be honest with you, it probably won't even be noticed. But just bringing in these little colors. Like on the St. Bernard's face, I just really, really watered some brown down and just barely touched it and then dry brushed over it so it looks like her little mouth is stained. Or her little polka dot. She's got a little polka dot fur there. So, and then we've got some ground here by his feet, so I'm just going to go ahead and pop a little bit of brown down here. I don't know if you can see where I'm painting exactly. Let's see if I can get that more up there. Yeah. His feet are right here. I'm going to try to avoid the feet. I get a tiny bit of brown. It's okay. Bird's feet are dirty. I don't think there's a bird with clean feet. Okay. And then I always like to paint the bottom of my projects because it gives it a more finished look. Okay, so that was our brown. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and um, clean this brush off. And uh, a couple of things of water, I'll show you what I'm using. You don't, again, you don't have to have things like this. I just happen to have it from doing toll painting from over 20 years ago. So I'm using what I have. So I'm just gonna go ahead and clean that. Now this brush is wet, but I have extra, so I'm just going to clean this one off and then mop up the extra water with this piece of paper towel, and then I'm going to set it aside and use one of the drier brushes. I want to stick with the dark colors for right now, get all my darks down, and then get all my mediums, and then the lights. Now, you might see me change my mind in a certain different sections. I might just go ahead and finish the whole section, like this head for an example. I might put the dark red, the medium red, and the light red and just finish that up. When I get to that part, I don't know. This is a work in progress. I We'll see how the flow goes. And hopefully it'll all make sense to you when I'm doing it. Okay. So I got that little bit of that brown all cleaned up right now. I'm going to give me a clean paper towel. I'll be right back. So now I'm going to go into the blues. Again, this is our reference. I'm going to be painting the blues here, 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 and his feet. So that translates over here with, with the turkey here. This is going to be this part up through here. Now this is going to be red because, of course, this isn't, isn't exactly like the reference, but where I feel the blue would be and where I feel the red would be. I'll do the blue first. And then his whole body, this part's gonna be blue. Okay, I got him too close to the camera here. Back him away. Back him away some more. There we go. I'm sorry. So his I'm gonna make this part um this part blue, this part red, and then this little I don't I'm sorry, I don't know the anatomies of turkeys. This little gobble thing, I'm probably totally slaughtering it. That's going to be red. My reference, his beak is blue, so that will have a blue. Of course, I paint his eyes like it should be. And then his body, the blue part of his body looks like, looks to be this part here, and this part here in the front, and going down to his little underbelly, and this little feather plumy thing. I, again, I don't know the names. That looks to be white with the little tips of blue, but we'll worry about that when we get there. So right now I'm going to do this blue, this blue, and then I'm going to turn him around. Then I'm going to do this blue. And good. So yeah, so the, the base coats on here, I, this isn't really a base coat, but it's like a base dry brushing coat. I, I don't know what the terminology is. I'm just trying to explain it. But you start with the darker ones, so you're gonna. If you were here in person, you'd say, "Oh, that thing looks gaudy." Trust me, it's gonna look cute when it's done. It will really look nice. All right, so let's do our blues. I got a couple dark blues that I want to start out with. I think I'm gonna start out with this darkest one here from Shuttle Art. 
So let me get some skews on the palette. I forgot about this. This is one nice thing about the Shuttle Art Paint, I noticed. And I just want to point this out to you. This is not a sponsored video. I've never even heard of this sh this kind of paint before. It was just inexpensive on Amazon. So I grabbed it. And it's working wonderfully. But there's this little plastic cap in here that I'm trying to work off here. I'm going to get a cap. So I'm get my nails under there and pull it off. And of course not. Let's see, this little cap goes fits inside there and helps keep the paint dry and helps keep it from getting up into the cap. Cap, you know, a little hole here and drying you out. Which I think is nice. So here we go. It's, it's, you can see it's still thick, or it's thick coming out of the bottle. And I want it to be a little thinner. Kind of want it to be like a, a thick ink consistency. This blue really looks, it's a different looking when it waters down. It's more of a royal blue. It's pretty though. I think it would. I think that's thin enough. I don't want it super thin in this case. Okay, and then let me grab my brush. And I just don't like to be wasteful, so I'm just gonna put the palette knife off with a brush. And then I'm just gonna put my paint in there and then just try to rub out as much as I can. It's a nice thing about this big palette. Again, you can use a piece of tin foil, and I'm just just trying to get that all into that brush. It's a pretty blue. It's actually lighter than I thought it would be, but that's okay. And then take my thick towel and just rub it out of there. I think that should be enough. We'll see. Let me start on the back side. Okay. Again, you see how it's just the blue's just going on the tips of those feathers. And then I'm painting in circles this time. I want to make sure those feathers are coated with blue, and not just the black. And with your ceramic objects, you will need to move them around, handle them a lot, twist them around, put them upside down, put the turkey on his head, put him on his side, <laughs> whatever I need to do to get the paint where I need it to be. Don't be afraid to move your your project or your um your bisque around, don't this is, leave it one spot and move your body around. Don't work harder, work smarter. In this case, I'm gonna have to move them around. So well, now that I put that blue on there, it but you can see how it's shinier. It must be because it's a different brand of paint. I don't really mind the shine because when I finish this, I'm gonna be um, coating it with some um, matte spray, but the reason I'm talking about it, because it makes it look more black than blue, but maybe in the light it'll show up more. Well, it's got a lot of other co coats anyway. And then I needed a paint brown right there on the inside, which I missed, and I already got rid of the brown. <laughs> of course. But let's go ahead and um, get, the, get his body here. And right now I'm just touching this really lightly with this brush and I'm not putting pressure on it. Now the other parts of the body, I was putting more pressure on the brush. Here I'm not because the texture is really fine.
I would uh, personally, how I just will, will describe my the paint on the brush at the moment, I would call it, in my own words, I don't know if it's a, the correct terminology, but in my words, I would say this is, feels more like a, a, a wet dry brush. It's not like super dry, this paint right now, but I really don't want it super um, dry. In my opinion, when it's super dry, that's when you do the little fine, fine details which is the last steps really. But right now I'm, st I'm still considering this a base coat. It's just, I want that black underneath to show as a shadow. So that's why, and I'm not being super duper careful. Um, like I was saying before, because, um, you know, the bird's not gonna be 100% one color here or there. Well, I guess it could be. Like if anything like my dog, I'm gonna wish, my St. Bernard where she's white, she's 100% white. There's nothing, I mean, she's like polar bear white there. But this turkey isn't um, like that, that I know of. Even if he is, my neighbor will never know the difference. <laughs> they will just think, oh, thanks, he's nice. And it's art, right? We can make mistakes in art, no problem. That's what's called art. It's not supposed to be like the exact thing. This is more my interpretation of turkey. I don't even know if my reference is 100% accurate. I just liked, liked that print. So that's what I want. That's what I'm going with. I didn't even go on the internet and, and search for what, search turkeys to see what they look like, the real thing, because I like, I like that reference. So I'm, I'm going with it making a decision. I would sit all day long trying to figure out, oh, what color do I use here and there? And no, 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 just get in here and do it. Now, if you're familiar with ceramics and dry brushing and that, and you have any tips for me, feel free to put them in the comments section. I will not be offended, I promise will not be offended. I do not know everything. Like I said, it's been about 35 years or so since I've actually worked with ceramics. Um, other than a little bit, since I've gotten some, I've painted a couple of things, but this is like my first big project. Um, yeah, I could have waited until I really knew what I was doing before I showed you guys, but this is a whole learning thing. Today I went outside and I um, did a video of, I did a ceramic studio tour video. It's not set up yet, but I wanted to show you all what's, what's in there. Maybe I'll get somebody excited and want to see more. And I'll, I'll be posting that. I actually may post that before I do this video because it's shorter and not easier to edit, to be honest. Um, but that's what I did earlier today. Okay, so I think I got the blue where I need it. And if you look here, you can see it. I move, only reason I move it in because the way I have my iPad set up, I can't see that part of the screen right here. I think you can see the blue, let me, oops. I'm not gonna do anything. Go right here. Oh yeah, yeah, you can see the blue. That I just put on. You can tell, like I said, this, this particular brand of paint's shinier than an Artisna, but, but it's okay. Oh, I gotta get his beak. Forgot about the beak. Let's get some blue on him. And I believe it's a boy bird because he's got the nice tail feathers going on. Okay, so I don't know if you, well, you can see because it's just shiny and that's dull. And that's really the brand of paint but you can tell this is brown and I don't really know if you can tell that's blue. You can tell over here it's blue, but here it looks more black, but that's because of the shine on it. And I think I got, oh, I got those other foot. Get the other foot coated. I'm running out of paint. On the brush, I'm running out of paint, not on the palette. Over here it is. Get that foot. I'm getting some of the ground instead. 
because I'm not using that fine smaller brush. Again, I'm not too worried about it because it's so dark and we're in the ground and I think, I think it'll be fine. Okay. And there's the, the darker blue coat. So, so far, let's go over what we've done. We've got blue, dark blue here, some dark blue here on top of the head, which, yep, top of the head. And this is going to be red, and that's going to be red. I haven't did any red yet. I got to do that yet. And we've got the brown on the tail feathers, brown on these other feathers, brown on the back side of his tail feathers. And I forgot to get the brown in here. I'm not super worried about that um, because of where it's located. When I do the other coats, I'll just, I'll put those in there. And even if this ends up being a little darker than that, it's okay because this would be natural shadow anyway. So, so I basically got the first dry brushing coat down with the exception of the red. And I think I'm just going to wait on the red um, until I get most of him done. I think that'll be, and I just do the reds all at the same time. I think that's what I'm going to do. I think that will work out better. Um, okay, so I'm gonna, it's pretty dry. I'm going to set this to, off to dry here for a little bit. I need to um, do a cup. I need to make dinner. <laughs> I'm starving. So, but I will be back and things will be, might be positioned a little bit different in the next, um, in the next step because I'm going to be moving some lighting around because it's starting to get dark in here. Anyway, see you in a few. All right. So since the last recording, I decided I need more blue on here and the blue that I was using right here it was really dark when it dried it made the black look blacker it dried like a navy blue and so i decided to use this an artesana sapphire blue so i put a coat of that on and i use i actually found this brush here to actually work better at least at this stage so as you can see it's coated pretty well and i also put another coat of the brown on there so i don't know if you can can tell exactly. So now I'm going to put another coat of blue on, but I'm, I'm going to do a lighter coat. So I took the blue and I put some white in it. So I'm going to mix the palette. Let's see that. So I'm going to make, go ahead and mix that. So we have just like a, I don't know how many shades lighter, but a few shades lighter than that blue that we had. And then I'm going to go ahead and put this on the turkey. And then I'm just going to go ahead and just clean my brush or clean the palette knife off with a brush to get that in there. And this is a nice dry brush. Now this brush probably won't be super dry. I'm trying to dry it off the best I can here. Wiping off some excess hair on this paper towel. And I'm just going to go ahead and do a little lighter coat of blue. You can see this brush here is working a little better for me. And also, if I go up like this, then I'm getting um, highlighting. The edges of those feathers pretty well and that's where the light's going to hit them too in real life so i'm going to go ahead and put this coat on all over the bird and you can just Sit back and watch and um, enjoy it. I might cut a little bit of it out, but so I'm just making sure you get the idea here. I'm just doing quick, light strokes, just so the edge of the ceramic piece is catching the edge of the brush. It's kind of like that, about that much of it.
Okay, so that looks pretty well done, and it's pretty much dry to touch. I mean, it's not it's not cured, but it's pretty dry to touch. So I'm going to do is add a little bit more white in the blue that I've already put out on my palette to take it to the next lighter shade here. If I had to guess the percentages, I would say right now it's probably about, oh, I would say 60% white and the 30% blue actually that we're well, mixing up right now because it wasn't quite enough contrast. I'll show you the contrast here as soon as I get this mixed. Here's the contrast that I've done. Oh, here we go. I don't know if you can tell or not. It's being a lighter. It's hard to tell what you can, can see and can't see in the camera there. And I think I'm going to quickly clean this brush because I don't want any, I want it to be lighter. So I'll be back. So we have a little lighter color here. Not blue. And I'm just using my finger and rubbing that in a little because it gave a really like sharp line there. And I really didn't want the sharp line. So this is going to be a highlight coat. So wherever the light actually hits it. So I'm just kind of just, I'm actually doing this really lightly. I'm just stippling a little bit of this light color on here because this brush is pretty firm so I can actually stipple with it. I'm just like getting a little highlights, random highlights here and there. I think it needs to have highlights. Whoa. Don't want that. I gave it a really interesting effect. I'm going back through and wiping that off. I just discovered something. Oh, I like that. Wiping a little bit of damp paper towel on this. And it's like bringing up some of those medium undercoats. Which gives it a really interesting effect. I don't know if you can tell the difference. Let me see if I can zoom the camera in. on a little spot that I'm talking about. Oops. I'm talking about this spot here. See how it's nice. It just gives it a more marble look, but I think that turned out really well. So just this streaky brush mark look. I mean, you can sit there and be all picky about this forever. I think the blue coat's pretty much done. When I get ready to finish the piece, I might go and over it and do a little different. Oh, I forgot his backside. Oops. Well, hmm. I'm going to get to do his backside here. I don't have any of that other color left. Well, let me just put this lighter one on. Let me see how that works out. All right, so I'm going to do the same the backside. I mixed some more paint up with less white in it, just a little tiny bit. So I'm just going to go ahead and Get this coat on here. So we'll let that dry a little. And this little piece here, I don't know what it's called, but it's on the reference, it's white with blue tipping. If you can see that or not. So right here, it's white with blue tipping. So I'm gonna go in there right now while the rest of this is kind of setting up drying. Like I said, it's dry to your touch, but it's not dry dry. I'm gonna go in there and paint a little bit of white on that. I'm not gonna actually dry brush them. I'm actually wet brushing it. 
that, looking at this reference, and I noticed around their, his head, it's really, really light blue, almost like a white. So I made it even lighter, and I took this little brush, and it's, it's a stiff brush, and I'm just really lightly wiping this on his head. And this is a completely dry brush, so this is what dry brushing really is more like. You just get a really dry brush and you're just wiping the residue off the brush onto the piece here. And if you remember by the reference, oh, this is going to be red through here. So I'm just really just trying to get where his neck and the red kind of run together. But this is this part here is going to be red, the red tones. But, and that's going to be red up here. So getting this peak a little better. And the other brush I was using, it just wasn't small to get into these little details. So you will need to use a variety of sizes of brushes. So I'm almost like scrubbing this on in a way. This, scrubbing that residue off of this brush. And then you don't want to use your best brushes to do this unless you have specific dry brush brushes. I don't have any. Um, so I'm going to use this. And I might just want to go through here and just kind of Kiss the areas with this really light blue. I found like really super lightly doing. Oops, was really super duper doing it light. And I'm going to take a little bit of this really light blue and put it over the white. So I did another coat, and that paint that I used was really close. After it dried, it's really close to the original brown that I painted. So you can't really see any definition or detail. So I'm trying this different shade of brown, which is a more of a medium um, medium shade. So I'm going to brush this next color on. And it's just the same as all the other coats here. Paint the same way. It's kind of like a golden brown. It's raw sienna is what I'm putting on here. All right, so I finished the third color of the brown on the tail, and then now I'm going to do the, the fourth color here. I'm going to let it set a little bit to dry, and I'm going to do a chore, and I'll come back and do the final coat on the feathers. As far as the dry brushing part is going to be this um, yellow ochre. And I'm just going to use a small, a small brush to do this, I think. It's more or less on the feathers here. When it's wet, it looks gold. Like, I, like I'm putting a gold on. It almost looks like a gold metallic, but it's not. It'll dry non-metallic, you look in. I don't know what it is, but when it's wet, it looks and looking metallic. One of those other colors did that, and then it dried it flat. So, I don't know. I'm going to do a little bit, just little kisses of this on the along with just a little bit, teeny bits here and there in the feathers, or tail feathers, I should say, and all of its feathers, right? So I think the feathers are pretty much done, except for the black and white that I need to put around the edges. And then I'm just going to rub a little bit of black on the, I don't know what part of that feather it's called, the bone part. Um, that seems to be darker in my reference. So I think what I'm going to do is put some, find something really soft, um, maybe like a cotton swab or something, a little bit of paint, and just barely touch that or maybe my finger even just barely put some dark on that we'll see 
Let's see when we get to that part. So I'm not super happy about this. I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know, figure something out. Something to make it look more natural. I don't want to really put any yellow on it. I'll figure something out. Anyway, there's the dirt so far. Actually, I'm going to put a little bit of green in it for to have a little bit of grass. And then the reference has a little little bit of green, like I'm, bird feathers are iridescent. -y. So there's a, it just looks like kiss with really light green. So when I put that in there too, um, and then I'm do the, the striping on this. Then we got the red to do. I'm, I don't know what this is called. This little piece comes around here and the red through here. Can't do that yet. Um, yeah, but he's he's coming along. So anyway, stick around. I'll show you that part too. So I'm going to do a little bit of green. I'm going to try to do it as light as I can. I must admit, this green really does bring this turkey to life. Oh my goodness. I don't know if you can see that. I mean, check in my camera. Make sure you can see that. It's really making it pretty, almost like um. Yeah, almost like peacock colors. That is really pretty. This green is like a grass green. I mean, it's really a vibrant green. But it must be, that's not the right one. It must be somewhat uh, transparent because, uh, is that the right word? Translucent. Because it, um, blue comes through it. And it making it, it's making it a teal, which is okay. It's really pretty though. Yeah, this crack really shows up now. It goes all the way up through here, but that mold was broken. So that's what happens. Um, with these molds, they can break, and then you can, believe it or not, you can glue them together as a special glue. Um, but when you take the piece out, you should, um, while it's still in green, where you should try to put some slip in there by hand and try to fix that up better. This one wasn't fixed up too good. It's probably, um, the lady made a bunch and she, anyway, she gave this one to my neighbor. They were helping, helping her move, so. Anyway. That looks really nice. Okay, so we have the head left, or I mean, not this part of the head, but this part, this, the eyes. And the detailing on the tail. And then he will be done. Yeah. Awesome. All right. So next, I'm going to do the red area. So it's going to be this, the part of this, and Hoping this covers. Oh, it's translucent like I thought it might be. I was a tad bit afraid of that. Well, maybe it'll work. Let's try it. If not, we'll see. So it's not drying red at all. It's drying like the paint's translucent. And red can be kind of known to do that. So this is a trick that I learned when I was told painting. Is to paint, if you're going to paint something red, paint it pink first. 
So I'm going to try that, see how that works. And I just, I didn't even bother to clean this brush, so it's kind of a purplish, but it doesn't matter. I need something. Um, I, I guess, I don't know, from what I understand from the tool painting class I had, I could be wrong, so any of you that know better, just I'll put it in the comments. But from my understanding, the pink, the, I mean, sorry, the red pigments are kind of translucent. So you can run into that. So I'm just going to go ahead and do this pink on him. I think need a better quality brush. I do have better brushes. All right, so see how the red now pops over that pink. I needed it to do. Exactly. What's none of that red part there? Oh. The color I'm actually painting it, it's more like a raspberry. That's okay, but that, this is just going to be the undercoat base color. So. There's going to be some more different reds put on there, but somehow or another. I, got, I don't know if I wiped all the paint off or what. This is like a white streak, so I'm just going to run that over a little bit. That's okay. Oh, I bet it was the light pink and it looks white against the duh. Okay. All right, so I need to let that dry before I put other coats in it because I'll be just wiping it off. Um, with acrylic paint, you can't take a wet brush over wet paint because you end up pulling it off. So I'll be back. We'll let that sit, and then we'll do the rest of that. Um, well, I'm, I might just paint a little bit of white on the eyes to get them going, but I don't really think that's necessary to, to film. It. You see that I got his eye painted, and I worked on whatever this thing's called. I put a, did get another coat of red on here, and I think I have to get kind of close. There's my reference. This and this. Anyway, it's kind of hard, <laughs> but I think I did pretty good. Next step I want to do is I want to paint around the tail feathers, and when I'm looking at this, it looks like it's painted. It's painted well this photo is or drawing whatever it's from here up is black remember how i was saying how the spines of the feathers they're darker so i want to put a little bit of black there i'm going to have to paint some black probably about let's see i'm so far away so i think i gonna have to paint from like here like the half inch black all the way around here and then do white Pinstripe line, whatever, all the way around here, and then another one, just like a quarter of an inch, eighth of an inch from the other one. So that's going to be a challenge. I've never painted, I've never done that before. And and then the reference here, it looks like there's a little bit of white around the feathers here, so I might just gently dry brush white around there. So so these are like more of the final touches. I'll try to record this. Let me see if you can see what I'm doing. I'll put a small amount of paint out right now. Um, and, I'll, and it's really thick, so I'm gonna make it like like a thick, inky consistency, I think. We'll start out with that. We'll see if it ends up being too translucent or not. We'll start with that. And then I'm also using a flat brush. All right, so there's where we are right now. I'll put the black on the spine of the feather and around the top here. And then I'm going to go around and put a, a white pinstripe on top and one just above this. 
black line. I hope they're thick enough. I can let that dry and I'll paint him a little black eye here. And I need a tiny, tiny, you know what I'm like, yeah, like that. Special tool for that. Here's my special eyeball tool for this guy. Look more alive. Yes, he is. I just smudged his eyeball. I felt the wet paint. Oh no. Actually, doing that ended up being a happy accident. It looks a little more real, I think, that way. Because you know how birds always look behind. They only see, like, beside you. They don't, beside themselves. They don't see like we, we do, right in front of our face. They see beside their faces. Yeah. Get a teensy bit more black over here. Tiny bit. I keep messing with it. I'll really mess it up. But okay, let's go on. <laughs> To the red now. And this I'm gonna stipple on, I think. But I'm gonna I think I'm gonna do it down a little. I'll try it full strength first, and if not, might add some white. Let's see how it turns out. It isn't a stipple brush, but it's really stiff. I'm gonna try this one first. I'll take it off the cap here. I'm just pouncing this on there. And it's kind of giving him the texture, kind of like how this dotted texture on his head is. It's kind of doing the same thing. The paint's leaving texture because it's thicker on the high points. So I think that might look okay once it's dry. I'm gonna do another, I'm gonna do another color too though. Dilute it down with some white. So we have I think we should have at least three colors to every layer, three tones, dark, medium, light, and then sometimes more, sometimes four or five different tones. It just depends on what you're painting and to achieve the look you want. And like here I did all those blues, but then when I popped that green on there, it's like, whoa, that was awesome. That really brought him to life. Okay. I'm let that dry a little. While that's drying, I'm going to scoop me out a little bit of the red with the palette knife. I think I'll just do it that way because I don't need a ton of it. I only need just a little bit. I already took out more than I needed. Now I need to put a little bit of white with it. It's hard to get this. Like, Little bit, come on. You know, it's because it's a flat brush. Sometimes I go in at this angle, sometimes I go in this angle. I'm moving, the, I'm kind of twirling the brush, going in different angles. So it doesn't look like line, 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 line. So it looks a little more natural here. I think that's okay. I don't know exactly how it's supposed to look, but I think it looks pretty close to that reference photo or reference picture. I need to put a little glint in his eye. I'm going to use my secret art supply or art tool, craft tool, toothpick. I just want a tiny little dot. Let's see how do I get that over there? Right here. There, close enough. There we go. Now he's got life. Now he's coming to life. He's almost alive here.
Okay, I think now I can do the that um pinstripe or whatever you want to call it on his tail. This is gonna be the hardest part, I think. Is it never done anything like that? And I don't think I'm gonna put on the back side of his tail. Maybe in real life they do have them, but I'm gonna be doing good, do the front part. Um I don't think anybody would be the wiser. So here's a rose and nothing. So I need me a this is a pin stripe or a line a line brush, I'm sorry. This is a line brush. I'm gonna try using this. I haven't used this in years. But we're gonna try and see if this will work for me. So here goes nothing. So we're gonna try it. So it's kind of like I'm making a white ink. And I got my line brush wet. And the object is, I don't know if I can show this or anyone can see it. Let me try. Let me try, let me try. So it's really kind of inky consistency. Oops. Just set that right there. Hope I don't get it in the red. And then I'm going to take my line brush and just twirl it in there. Just get it nice and sopping wet. I'm going to twirl it so it comes to a point. And we're going to come over here and I'm going to pray that it works. I literally haven't did anything like this in 23 years. So this is all a memory. And I know you're supposed to do it all in one sweep. You're not supposed to go back like I do, but hey, what do you want for having been doing this in so many years? I was painting along and my battery in my iPad died. <laughs> so this is what I've got done so far. I'm going back and giving it a second coat. And then I'm gonna to try to do that other line, but I don't know if I'm gonna be able to because it needs to be really thin and this one's thicker. This paintbrush is thicker. But we'll see. I will give it a whirl, I'll try. And I changed palettes to this little this little one because I'm only doing the one color right now. Okay, so now I'm gonna try that top line. This is what's gonna be a little oh a little scary for me. I'm gonna do it really light. What are you doing, Frankie? Frank? What are you doing? You think a boy? Yeah? Okay. What's happening is every time I hit one of these ribs, it makes the line a little thicker. Like that right there. It's actually supposed to be some more black on it. this side of the line. I should have made that black, original black line a little, little wider. Well, if I ever paint another one of these, I will do a better job. It's the first time doing this particular piece. I think it's pretty close to my reference. You know, not exactly, of course, but I think it's pretty close. My reference. Let's see if I can back them up a little. There we go. There. All right, there we go. 
What do we think? I think it's pretty close. I could probably put some little highlights in his wings through here a little bit. And dry brush a little bit of white here and there. And I think that would work. Read my work to myself. Yeah. I'm gonna look this way. I was trying to see if I could get it in the camera, but that's not really feasible at the moment. Yeah, I think that white does bring it to a little bit more life. Just barely dragging this just to kind of scrape off some white on his body. Dipple just a little bit of white. Um, here, so that rubs them in. That little teeny bit of white driving me bonkers. So, right here, I'm gonna take a little bit of paint on this toothpick, I think. It's just to kind of hide that white some. Yeah, that looks much better. My eye will go to it every time I glanced over there. Oh yeah, much better. It's amazing what teeth, <laughs> not even a drop of paint would do. Okay, so we got some of this white. Let me see if I need more of it. On that picture, these feathers here should be lined as well. I don't know how to double line them. That's really fine. I wonder if I can just get away with just highlighting them white like, like this. That's what I'm going to do instead. And I think it turned out pretty good considering I haven't done this in like forever. Actually, I never did this before. I believe um, the turkey's finished, and I'm going to let him dry, and then I'm going to spray him with some sealant, um, a matte sealant, and take a bunch of pictures, and take him over to my neighbors so I can be home. All right, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this. Subscribe to my channel if you got some value out of this. Like it, share it with your friends. I would really appreciate it. Again, this is Lori, the Crafter of the Mitten. Until next time, bye.